Good day and welcome to this VCSP how-to video. My name is Ayan Munselmans and I work as a cloud system engineer for Veeam. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a backup job. This video is going to focus on the backup of a virtual machine. We do virtual machine backups on an image level and we have application aware integration for Microsoft Active Directory, Microsoft Action, Microsoft SQL, Microsoft SharePoint, Oracle databases and any third party application or database through pre and post scripting. We use inline data reduction by DDAP and compression. We use change block tracking so that we only fetch the data blocks that have been changed since the latest backup. We do that agentless. We use 265 bit of encryption if that is turned on. And we can do this by policy driven backup automation if you want that. So let's talk about automation. We can do that via PowerShell. So all options are available in PowerShell, creation, deletion, addition of backup jobs. Now we can do that with RESTful API. And of course we can use tags based on vCenter or Hyper-V. When we use tags, that's very convenient for other administrators when they create a VM, they just assign it the correct tag and it's being automatically added to the correct backup job. Uh, when you switch uh, tags, it will be added to a different backup job or it gets removed from the backup, it really depends on your business need. It's fully automated to vCenter or to uh, Hyper-V uh, or System, uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. So, how does it work? Let me show you. So, here you see a Veeam UI, a Veeam server. So, to create a backup job, we go to the home menu bar, so if you're in the view or whatever, go to home, go to backup job, we select of which type of a machine we want to make a backup job. So in this case, it's a virtual machine, not a phys physical machine. We select vSphere in this case, and the backup result will start. Let me give the backup job the correct name. So it's VMware, it's uh, application one in this case. Fill in a description. Uh, very useful for other backup administrators to see why this job has been created, for which customer or for which tenant, uh, who created it, etc. Press next and we are going to add VMs to the backup. So we press the add button. We can do that on several levels. So we can do the entire vCenter or we can do a drill down to a specific data center, specific cluster or specific host or specific VMs on that host. So let me do this one. But it's also possible to do this based on VMs and templates. So that's the folder structure. So if you have created folders for customers, you can just add a customer folder here and all VMs that reside in those customer folders will get to the backup. So in this case, this covers virtual machine. We can even do this based on data stores if you want. Not that convenient, but I can think of several reasons to do this. So all machines residing on a specific data store. And of course, I already showed you, you can do that based on tags. So in this case, um, we have a backup category in the tags and with the backup category, we have a tag called application one. We can use that. Then we can shift priority for specific VMs or groups of VMs. So I want to do the domain controller at first and the rest, I don't care what's the, uh, what's the sequence. It really depends on your needs. So in this case, I'm going to remove some things because otherwise the job is a bit too long. So domain controller and SQL server. Um, one thing to show you is the exclusion part. So imagine you have added the entire folder here. And from within those within that folder, there's one VM you want to exclude from the backup because it's not necessary in the backup. It's unnecessary data. It only takes resources. Or you can imagine it's a specific VM that has uh, stricter requirements for backups. So um, you want to make a dedicated job for that VM. Add the exclusion of that VM here and make a new backup job for the specific VM with the correct settings that are applicable to that VM. You can also do an exclusion based on disks. So for example, if you have a large disk that's connected to this server and you do not want to store it in the backup, just select here, select the disks. We add the correct 
school CID, for example, 00, zero is the system partition, 0, 01 is where SQL Server is installed, 0, 02 is where the logging is, but 0, 03 is stale data. I don't need that in the backup, so I'm going to not select that. And in this case, you can only select the disks that are applicable. In this case, I'm going to select all disks. But so let's press next. On the next level, we're going to select the backup proxy in the backup repository responsible for transporting the data and responsible for storing the data. I'm not going into detail on the backup proxy and the backup repository. We have different videos for that, but one thing I want to show you, you can choose which backup proxy is being used for this backup job. The default is automatic selection, so we will uh, see which backup proxy has the least load uh, and is capable of accessing this VM, for example. Uh, but if you want to uh, use uh, your own selection criteria for a specific job, for a specific VM, you can use that here as well. So just check mark the correct proxies that are needed. Uh, and what we then do is we'll check the load of each proxy and define which proxy gets which VM to process. So after being after selecting this, selecting the correct backup repository, we're going to select the retention. So in this case, default is seven days. I find that was short, so I want to do 14 days. Or depending on your needs or your customer needs, you can also do 14 restore points depending on how you schedule the backup jobs. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. So in this case, I'm going to select days. Um, the backup will be stored for 14 days. Uh, but if I want to keep the backup for longer, I have an option to keep certain backups longer for archival purposes. So uh, we can specify a GFS retention policy for this backup job. And GFS stands for grandfather, father, son. So when we press configure, we'll see what we mean by that. So we can make weekly fulls, monthly fulls, and even yearly fulls. In this case, I don't want to do the yearly fulls, but I want to store it four weeklies and three months. Then we specify on which day in the week we do the weekly full. So uh, do we do that on Friday evening or Saturday evening or Sunday evening? It really depends on your business needs. Saturday is fine, and then we can specify if the first Saturday of the month is the month is the monthly or the last Saturday in this case of the month. I find the last Saturday more convenient, so let's select those. Press OK. One thing to show you is the advanced button. So in the advanced button, you can see several tabs. I'm not going to bother you with all those tabs, but I want to show you the storage tab. Within the storage tab, we have some defaults here. So inline data deduplication, please leave those check marks on. We exclude some data, so the swap files and deleted files, that's not necessary. We use compression and DDUP, so that's storage optimization. And we can encrypt the backup file here. Uh, you can use an already existing encryption key, or we create a new key, put in a description. So encryption key uh, for application one put a password in please remember to store those passwords and use that the secondary destinations are referring to a backup copy job or to a backup to take job I'm not going to cover that in this video. Um, we can do a backup copy uh, to, to uh, keep in line of the three to one zero rule. Um, we have different videos for that. We press next and then the interesting uh, part is going to be that we are going to do application aware backups of SQL Server and the domain controller in this case, because that's part of the VMs that I have added to this backup job. So. Uh, what we do, we uh, um, we talk VSS, and as you can see, if you press the application button here, we require a successful VSS processing. If that's not the case, we are going to fail the backup. We can also change some settings here, try application, ignore failures, then the backup might go on, but it might be uh, in a not consistent state, but you still have the data. 
Uh, and when we do a SQL Server, we want the process transaction logs. If you have different backup software that's still doing backups of SQL Server or Oracle databases, perhaps you want to perform a copy only. Then the other application will do the transaction log backup and log shipment. So uh, let's keep it on this, go to the SQL tab, and then we can define what we want to do with those logs. By default, we truncate those logs. We backup it once a day, uh, although uh, we backup it as many times as we want, depending on how we schedule the image level backup. But when we do the image level backup, we truncate the logs. But we can also do the periodically backuping of the logs. So for example, um, with the default settings, we do a backup of the logging to the Veeam repository every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, uh, we uh, instruct the SQL Server to uh, upload its logs to the Veeam backup repository. And so in a worst case scenario, we can always uh, restore those SQL Server to a 15 minute window. We can even go as low as five minutes so each, every five minutes, the backup gets shipped, the, the, the logs of the backup gets shipped to the Veeam repository. And then we can define how long we want to store those log backups. So until the last corresponding image level backup is deleted, or we only want to do this for some for 14 days, because I don't want to restore my database longer than 14 days, to, so to say. Same goes for Oracle. We can do the same settings here. Um, in the presentation, I told you we can also do pre and post scripts. So in this case, it's a SQL Server, we can use the correct settings. But if it's, it's a not supported system, we can use a pre and post script. So the application vendor or the database vendor normally has some scripts available to tell the database it goes into hot backup mode. And after the backup has finished, we can do uh, uh, the database can go in normal operation mode, something like that. So we select require successful script execution. We define our pre-freeze script and post call script. So go in hot backup mode. Okay, backup has finished, go in normal operation mode. And we can do that for Windows or for Linux, depending on the server that we are talking about. Um, in this case, it's not necessary. We go to OK, and that's it. Then we're not quite done yet. Um, to talk with the application, to talk with the SQL Server here, or to talk with the domain controller, we need some guest OS credentials. Um, we, I already made some credentials. I made a service account for Veeam. And um, we want to test if this account has the correct corresponding rights to talk with the SQL Server and with the domain controller in this case. And what you can see here is that we are uh, talking with the SQL Server on its IP address. It's a server 2019 and it's connecting to RPC. So that means we're connecting over the network. And um, what you can also see is we're connecting to FIX, via FIX. And FIX means VMware integration tools. So via the VMware tools. Um, so if you don't have uh, connectivity over the network because it's firewalled or it's, it's isolated or whatever, we can always make a, a successful application or a backup and we do that through FIX. For Hyper-V, we do that through PowerShell Direct. So let's wait a couple of seconds because it needs to validate the connections and FIX is not that fast. So that's why we are always waiting on this. And as you can see, all is validated successfully for a SQL Server. The main controller will be in a couple of seconds, probably. And there we go. We press close. So now we know this credentials work correctly. We have set up the application of our processing correctly. And then there's one checkbox I want to discuss with you. That's file system indexing. So for example, if you have a large file server and you want to search for restores or into all the files that are located on that file server, then it's convenient to enable guest file system indexing. What it basically does, before the backup runs, we index that specific server and uh, for that server, we store that in the index database so that you can search through it. 
We can of course do some exclusions. So for example, if this is a SQL, uh, uh, sorry, if this is a file server, we can index everything except specific folders or um, a specific volume, or so to say, something like that. We can add those. And add those. Let's press next. Only thing we need to do is define a schedule. So um, run this job daily at a specific time, every day, on weekdays, or on specific days. So you can specify, I'm going to run it on Sunday, for example. Or we can do it every, let's say, eight hours in a schedule. And let me do that. I don't want to run it at the, uh, uh, the whole hour, every eight hours. So I want to do it at six minutes past the hour. And I don't want to do that to when it's normal office hours. So say from eight till six and do a deny here, press OK. By default, we do some uh, field retry. Uh, so if, uh, if something uh, doesn't work correctly and we get a field message, we do a retry. We do that three times. You can see that in the job history. And after that, we probably need to fix something because that's the reason why the backup doesn't run correctly. We even have a terminate job if the backup exceeds the backup window. You can use that if, if needed, but um, it's up to you. Let's press apply. You see a, uh, a summary of the job. You can run the job immediately if you want, or you press press finish, and you see the job coming in here. And you see it's scheduled to start at six minutes after 6 p.m. tonight. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.